Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of that celebrity interview. Good day, Dr. Ryan Weedy. Thank you and welcome to the Valder Beebe Show as I broadcast live across America on FM. How are you? Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. You're here to talk about a very heady subject, deep brain stimulation. Make my audience understand how this can impact them. Well, deep brain stimulation is a neurosurgical procedure that can influence circuits within the brain to help patients who have uncontrollable tremors, slowness, or stiffness. It's all aimed at in trying to improve their quality of life as a result. When you say deep brain tremors, are you talking about people that are diagnosed maybe with Parkinson disease or some other type of disease like that? Yes, Parkinson's disease would be a common condition that this could treat. Essential tremor, however, is probably five to 10 times more common than Parkinson's. It's just not talked about as much, but those people have usually very severe shaking that interferes with their ability to do common daily activities like eating, drinking, writing. When you say there's a lot of people experience this, who's the best candidate for this deep brain stimulation procedure then? So the best candidates for deep brain stimulation would be persons who've seen a neurologist who've been treated with medications but whose results have just been inadequate. If they still have troubles, deep brain stimulation may be an answer for them. How do you know that you're a candidate for this? Do you talk to your regular doctor? Do you talk to a neurologist? How do you find this out? Well, I think it's, it would be best to go see a neurologist who's got a background in this field. So they are called movement disorder neurologists, believe it or not. And they would be able to determine if you're a good candidate or not. I want my audience to know that Dr. Ryan Wheatley is a neurologist professor and an international expert on Parkinson's disease and other movement disorders. And this is what we're talking about this morning. So those people who are experiencing these tremors and, and, and maybe undiagnosed, how do they get diagnosed, doctor? Because a lot of time the do doctors are not diagnosing us correctly. No, no, no uh, shade on the doctors, but sometimes they don't. Yeah, these conditions really require a judgment call. That is, you need somebody with experience who can determine what's the diagnosis, what treatments are reasonable, and if those medication treatments are not successful, uh, whether the person's ready for deep brain stimulation. Deep brain stimulation is a treatment that essentially influences some of the brain circuits in a way that's reversible. That is, when you turn the power on, it influences the circuit. When you turn it off, it stops doing that. So we normally are gonna keep the circuit circuits influenced by the deep brain stimulation continuously. The way this works is we have to put a small wire into the brain and leave it there. We have to leave it in a spot that we can influence those movement troubles. We do so by connecting the wire to a power source, a battery. And we place the battery essentially in the same position that most pacemakers are placed. By connecting that battery all the way up into the brain with, with a series of electrodes, we can deliver current into the brain and hopefully influence circuits that aren't working quite right. So we could call this deep brain shocking, but I don't think as many people would be interested in going ahead with such a procedure if we called it that. <laughs> well, is it not like the, the days of old when people did go through shock, you know, that was a common procedure for people who had different kinds of uh, uh, malfunctions. So, but this is different. This is more advanced. This is more technology driven. I'm going to hope, hopefully, think. That's right. The uh, 
electroconvulsive therapy or shock therapy was delivering lots of power to the whole brain, essentially causing a giant seizure. And this is delivering just a trickle's worth of electrical current into the brain, such that the person is not even aware that anything is happening, other than they've got improved function of their hands and their, the rest of their body. Well, let me ask you, are there any cl clinical trials for this? Because that's something that people are opting into more and more these days. Yes, there are clinical trials looking at different aspects of deep brain stimulation. Uh, we did the original ones here in the United States in the mid-90s that led to FDA approval of this device in 1997. But there continue to be multiple trials aimed at looking at even better technology or improvements in that technology. And those would be uh, in, in, in a clinical trial form. Sounds good. Is there a place online that my audience can go for those people who are listening and, and maybe this is a ray of hope for them? Absolutely. Uh, if your listeners could look at mayoclinic.org, there's plenty of information about deep brain stimulation and even the, the diagnoses that may benefit from this condition or from that treatment. Well, I, I talked to quite a few people from the Mayo Clinic, and you guys seem to be doing groundbreaking work, so I salute all of you at the Mayo Clinic for what you're bringing to our, our planet. Thank you so very much, Dr. Wheatley. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I'm Valder Beebe. I host the Valder Beebe Show, broadcast on radio and television. And this is my phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.